Finance Committee meeting to order March 15th, 6 p.m. Um, since Dan's here, we'll go over his first. I think Philip wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to go over? No, does it have any we'll questions? Or we'll like, we'll okay. Philip, do you want to go over anything? Yeah, I'll hit the highlights, but really, Dan and Jennifer probably knowledgeable about this, if not more knowledgeable than that. But uh, I know there's been quite a few concerns and complaints. Uh, my utility, and I've seen some real honkers people brought in the office. But I wanted to point out just a couple things that people may want to check their bill to double check. And we have your bill, Eric. We went back and looked at it. And on your bill, your total amount due is over $700. But it's two months because it has a previous balance on it. So I want everybody who may be listening tonight to check their utility bills to make sure there's not a previous balance showing, that if you remember. Mean it's overdue. It's just the bill was uh, uh, printed. So I think that can explain some. I don't know if it can explain all, but I think it can explain some. If we look at what we did in the past few years, Jennifer graciously provided me with the base rates, the base rates, okay? And if you look at um, FY21, okay? And if you look at what our base electric rate is, it is eight dollars and twelve cents per month, and then there's a, a, a tier for consum you know higher users that have different tiers. Okay, the budget that we're operating on currently, if you read it, is the exact same rate schedule. Okay, eight dollars and twelve cents a month, and this is our basic charges. Okay, and if you look at your bill, that will be under the electric line. <coughs> That's your base bill now. What we did do, so we didn't raise everybody's rates, but if you remember last year, you guys, and for Jake, this is informational. Lynn, you live here in town too, but um, this is, in, uh, last year what we did do is we started a power cost adjustment. We used to be on your bill, you saw an FA, which is fuel adjustment. Now I think the acronym is now PA, which is power adjustment clause, okay? That includes your fuel adjustment that we always pass through. It includes now SEPA, where the town is obligated by contract uh, to purchase the power, I think, out of the fill pot system and, Kerr and uh, Kerr Reservoir. Um, and it also includes the, uh, the true up, which is pretty big. It was over $480,000 for the year. So that's the line that did go up this year. It used to be called fuel adjustment, but now it's called power adjustment, power adjustment clause. What calls have we had to read read meters, Dan? There's a bunch of them on here. Yeah. Any of them come back? Back in mind. Allison didn't have to say nothing else. Brittany had said that she was pretty sure she's heard from every electric customer this month. <laughs> they, they <laughs> tell everyone else. Yeah, they're just questioning the bills and just. You know, when people get light out. bills, of course it's warm outside now, but you're actually paying for your January, January usage. Usage. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So just, just like we were talking about yours, Eric, yours was back in December was uh, your kilowatt hour usage was. 66, 67, 32, I believe. 67, 37, right? Is that right? Kilowatt hours. Yeah, 67, 26, 37 kilowatt hours was your consumption. Now, you haven't got your bill yet, but we read March 1st, and you've gone down to 1498. Kilowatt hours. Did you do anything different at your house? No. So it's, it's just, it's just cold weather. Yeah. So everybody, our Vima bill, we just got that today. Uh, mm -hmm. For the month of January, the town purchased from Dominion almost five million kilowatt hours. So uh, this month it was just got it today, as a matter of fact. Just got it today. It was uh, it had gone down to three point six million. So it was just it was just the cold weather. Okay. A lot of people look at it and they say, "Well, cold weather, thirty degrees isn't much." But when you talk about heat pump, yeah, huge. When heat pump gets below, once it gets below forty degrees outside, it, it ain't no good. No, they're gonna run all night. Their electric strips are either running all night. Exactly. If people ask you, first of all, make sure they don't have a previous balance where they hadn't paid the bill prior to this one being printed, if anybody asks you guys. Um, and then the second item is we did not raise the base rate, but we did include in the PA, which used to be FA, two new line items. And one of them was a true up of $480,000, uh, and that was a lick from um, uh, Dominion. And that money goes straight back to Dominion. Okay, the fuel adjustment goes back Explain to Dominion. What that trip's for? That's for clean energy. 
the true up is is and Dan goes to the meetings, but for the most part, what it is is the the depreciation and the the, the dismantling of coal fired plants in the state of Virginia. They haven't right. closed yet. It'll to be five years before they close them, but it's just a county side of things. So, yeah. But the way we're going is that that um, true up charge that portion of the bill should go away July first. Correct. Correct. And we're seeing their January projection showing that that eliminates. Okay. But just so everybody knows, we get nothing out of any of the PA charges. We pass them yeah, directly through. Pass through. All passed through. Okay. But we used to eat the SEPA amount, which is about $70,000 now. Yeah. Okay. And to tell you what your fuel adjustment did this year. Okay. The fuel adjustment, which is part of that PA, last year's rate was 0 .00439 per kilowatt hour. And Allison scribbled out here, and the new rate, the current rate that we're using, is 0 .014, so it's almost a 300% increase in fuel adjustment. And I don't know where we're going in this country with fuel and cost, and this could go up some more. I, I just don't know. The fuel adjustment that you're seeing on that bill is even reflecting what the current fuel prices are now. You know, the, they had a mid-year adjustment already. But that was before Ukraine and Russian back. sanctions. and. do it two times a year, right? First. I believe, yes. Yeah. I don't think you need to expect any increase before okay. July 1st. Well, the fuel changes in, what, April? The new cost? Normally, correct. And then SEPA changes. They, they have a change coming in April. They went up as well. So that will be reflected on this next bill. But it's a small percentage of your total bill. It will be. And the I, Dominion will right. come April if they – under collector from BEMA will recollect what they under collected this past year. So Is it true? to make up the difference, yeah. They're, not, they're going to break even as well. So. The one thing that we are looking for, that the mayor is looking to come from mm -hmm. you guys, Dan included, we need a more up to date comparison beyond the base charge for a comparison of other localities mm -hmm. nearby. We've got, I don't know how, if I'll have it for you Monday night. I think it's pretty easy for us to try to compare with Culpeper, and Jennifer did some of that today. Yeah. The tricky part comes when you compare to Southside or Dominion, and that may have to ask Robert to help out a little bit. And just well, I got my Southside electric bill. They can just take the kilowatt hour there and plug it into the computer here. I, I would prefer. I don't even care about reaching out to anyone else other than Southside and Dominion. Okay, I, I think the mayor had mentioned some of the other towns in Vima, and we can. I don't do think some those of that. matter. I think it matters everybody else around saying, "Oh, well, your bills are high," and Black said, "No, we want to prove that." No, it's not really. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Dominion's prices are, but you're not going to beat them. They are the. Uh, they the wholesalers. <laughs> They're the wholesalers. Yeah. So you ain't going. Ain't no way you can beat their price, you know. And I don't know if you can beat Southside. We might be competing with them, but they're a way bigger customer than. Yeah. You know, we got two thousand customers. They got mm -hmm. sixty thousand customers. You know, it's like a country store comparing it to Walmart. You know, yeah. Just, but I will tell you, many years ago, Robert Thomas did come to town. Now this is a demand meter situation, and this is a commercial customer. And he sat down with the business owner and calculated the bills right in front of him and said, your bill, it, with your consumption, kilowatt hour wise, you'd be paying about 25% more on Southside. But that was probably 2012. I, mean, I remember that. Yeah. All right. So there are some things, but so the record reflects, we didn't raise the base rate, added this power cost adjustment. But if people are seeing the big increase on that particular line on their bill that says electric, that's usage, that's consumption. Okay. Unless there's something that we can't find or prove or, or just because we're getting so many people requesting these pre reads. Have we ever had an issue with a meter? Back in the day when you had mechanical meters that we actually had to go out and hand write them and Yeah, well even then we had mechanical meters and we still had Earth on the radios when they first came out. So okay. the mechanical meters did transpond radio signals, but now everything's polyphase and digital and just little computer circuit boards. Back in the day, Southside Electric, for instance, had one man, that's all he did was run around and recalibrate the meters because the losses were so bad on them. They, they would lose money. So he would test the meter in the van and recalibrate and adjust it. I think they had a margin of plus or minus, you know, 2% or something. Yeah. But when you got, I don't know, 50,000 customers, a little bit here and there mm -hmm. that you're losing, you know, they're not doing it. They're doing it for their benefit. The only experience that we have, and you may remember this, Eric, you've been around long enough. If you remember, there was a lot of question about Barbara Thompson's utility bill. Right. God, it was probably seven or eight years ago. And some of the council wanted to know, was she paying some, a bill? Some had demanded on this council that we replace the meter. And 
Well, we actually had it tested. There was a private company that came in. I still got the report in my office, and it was actually reading low. It was 98%. So the one time that I know that we've had somebody come in there to test a meter, actually put it on the board, I guess, and, and test it, it was actually running slow. And, and the monthly Slightly. adjustments are more, for a hurry read, to over a 12-month period, it's more water and sewer because those meters are older and they do more. I don't see a whole lot of misled right. electric meters because they're newer and the, the, the radio mm -hmm. reads, you know, it's our water meters that... We are in the... Yeah. We are in the process of replacing yeah. electric yeah. meters. This east end has got 200 water meters. Water meters. Water meters, yeah. excuse me. Water meters and that. And then using ARPA funds and then budgeting over the years, we'll try to do it approximately like we did with Dan, replace a book at a time and get these electric, or the water meters replaced. All right, so just work on the comparison. Yep. Try to, uh, Dan, you know, obviously, with your bill. Yeah, you your bill. Mine coming today, matter of fact. Okay. We'll work on. All right. Is that it on that? That is it on that. Hopefully we explain your highlight. Did you read the way up? Yeah, not bad at all. Was it? We've had some people that walked through here. Mine didn't go up terrible, but it went up. But it wasn't. What do you think your thermostat set on? <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. See, we had a lady come in with a really good meal the other day. A woman came to office with a really good meal, and she was like, what happened? And I was like, I don't know what I can't tell you what happened. And what do you keep your thermostat? That's the same thing. You let a commode run with water leaks and you know, all that kind of stuff. What do you got to sit on? Oh, I never, it, it hadn't gone over 75 yet. And like I said, and we'll say in public, for, I've researched it. For every degree over 70, each degree you go up, it's a three percent increase in your light bill. Is it really? Is that that? Yeah, that. If you Google it, yes, it'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Now we are. All right, Dan, if you want to leave. I got a cool. I got another beat, but I got time to go. Ahead. Okay. All right, Philip, you know more about all this stuff, so take it away. I will begin leave. on the leachate. Jennifer's going to handle a lot of this stuff. I'll do the leachate, and I think there's one other thing for me. Jennifer's going to do the health insurance premiums, all that kind of stuff for you. All right. Um, leachate rates, and thank you all for coming. We, as you see, we have county administrators, assistant county administrator, and Lynn Shackleton here in town. If you look at your packet, the first page in your packet is a comparison of when our town staff uh, called around to different communities to ask what septage and leachate is charged by the gallon, okay? And you can see, if you don't have a copy of this, the town of Farmville receives 15 cents a gallon on septage, domestic septage, and pumping out a septic tank if you live in the country or um, I guess Port of Johns, that sort of thing, all right? Leachate, Farmville kind of had a handshake deal like we did for years on leachate where they get consideration at the landfill from Prince Edward County in exchange for leachate rates, okay? Hopewell, which is a big uh, industrial facility for septage is a nickel a gallon, okay? Basically, the only people that get this price are residential septic tanks. Most, most other septage, which I would assume are Porta Johns, uh, would be 12 cents a gallon. I will tell you this, that uh, the most toxic, I say toxic, the most noxious uh, waste that we receive or have received is dog pound waste. It's hideous to try to deal with because it doesn't break down like normal human waste. It's undiluted, it's very thick, and all those kinds of things. So heads up, whoever's going to be getting the, the, the waste, perhaps from the new Burkeville facility. Um, so a nickel gallon on typical domestic septage in Hopewell, 12 cents for other septage, and I don't have an actual definition of other, but I assume uh, that would be Porter Johns or something commercial. And then leachate is 13 cents a gallon. Uh, Ed Harris, our utility operator, is the one that put these notes on there. It says, extremely choosing what they accept, only allowing two landfills right now. Uh, testing must be done before they can accept. Okay. Uh, South Hill is six and a half cents for domestic septage and 3.3 .3 cents a gallon for leachate. And I think they also have two commercial landfills that uh, are two landfills to go. I think one's commercial, one's municipal. What are we currently for septage? Uh, we charge, the only customer we've ever had is 15 cents, and that was Edmonds during the Afghan crisis when we were doing 50 Porter Johns a day. Point Pardon? 0 .008. 0 .008. 
And if you it's half, right? Huh? That's half of the and it's on half rate, yeah. But uh, just so you know, real quick, uh, town of Lawrenceville is, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but this shows 78 cents. I'm not sure that's 100% right. I think it may be 7.8 cents. And then leachate does not accept. I'd have to double check that Lawrenceville number. And crude cannot accept it without a significant upgrade. Right. If we look at gallons billed, okay, and gallons delivered, okay, we received, and just if you go to the top, we received that first particular month, and I, I these are 12 months, but I, I could tell you what 12 months they are if Allison would go back and tell me what they were, but they delivered 240, or excuse me, 294,000 gallons to the town. And these are numbers reported to us by the county. These aren't numbers, because it's not metered. They dropped this in a manhole up at, uh, behind Matty Neal's old house on Division Street, on West Division Street. 294,000 gallons were received. We only billed, and this was that handshake deal, we only billed for 147,000 gallons. So we only billed for half, okay? And basically we used the in-town sewage rate. And that's by the thousand gallons. So it's eight dollars and forty-eight cents per thousand gallons. If you extrapolate that back into per gallon, that's where you get the less than a penny. Yeah. And don't ask me how this was arrived at. Larry and, and Ronnie, I guess years ago, had had come up with a deal. You may remember, Katie. I don't know how it is, but that is how we've been billing for certainly the last ten years. Okay. So last year, we actually billed and were paid by the county $61,252. If, and I'm not act recommending this, but if the town were to go to the 15 cents is what we have been charging for septage, we really don't get a lot of callers for septage except for because of the Afghans and the Porter Johns and all that, we said 15 cents is what we'll, we'll take. And I don't think Edmonds complained very much because I think the federal government was probably reimbursing it all. Um, but he does not bring us septage on a regular basis. If he pumps out a septic tank, he's not bringing it to us. Uh, but at 15 cents a gallon, if we chose, or if council chose to go to that rate, um, you'd be looking at $1.145 million, and I think that's just on the half volume. Even if you were looking at the cheapest rate on here, well, I think South Hill, 3.3 .3 cents is the lowest. I reported it erroneously to you uh, at 33 cents, but it's 3.3. .3. We went back and double check. That's a tremendous increase at just at 3.3 .3 if you build it 100%. So here we are. I don't know what council, what the county is asking or can sustain so or proposing to do. Well, I don't know. I don't want to. I'll be honest with you. We're kind of in this together. We're not out here to gouge you guys. And, and sixty-one thousand, even if we build you at a full price, I mean, it's not going to change the town's lifestyle. Okay. I don't think fifteen cents is right. I don't think that's what we are looking for. Um, I would say it it shouldn't be any more than a competitor. At, three cents or 3.3 .3 cents. I certainly wouldn't recommend it being 15 or 10 cents or 13 cents or anything like that. Um, but I do think that it's been a good deal for a long time. Yeah. Can I speak? Mm -hmm. All right. So, thanks for having us. Uh, Ted Costin, County Administrator. And as Philip has indicated, the board chairman, uh, Lynn Shuckland, is here this evening along with Katie Tomer, the assistant. Um, I'd like to go a little bit deeper into your packet. You do have a new proposed fee schedule, um, which was adopted in 2020 before my arrival, and then a new proposed fee schedule, which I have offered up. Uh, the board has not acted on it, and kudos to the board, because um, the more I dig into landfill issues, the worse it gets. And uh, some of these fees that are proposed in here may actually have to, uh, to go up. Um, but... Um, the, what this proposal was, and if you'll notice, and I can't remember who said it was. The other night when I was here for the board meeting, somebody said, well, we got to get away from the handshake deals, and we do, but we want to make a deal. Okay, we want to come to some kind of agreement because, as Phil, Philip says, this is, we're all in this together. Um, 
one of the things that we proposed was our increased rate in the sludge. Now, you all are our only sludge client and customer. And under this rate, you all would jump from 20000 to about 70000 about a $50,000 increase. Um, to try to move this along in, in, the, you know, in the show of good faith, what we'd like to do as part of any agreement that we come to, waive that off. We'll, we'll take the sludge and basically bill you nothing. Um, it's, it's basically heavy, heavy dirt at the end of the day. It's, it comes up to be heavy dirt. Um, would you say that increase would have been? Just it would have been a $50,000 increase based on current rates and all that kind of stuff. The current volumes, current rates, uh, then go into a higher rate. And you're using $52 a ton on the sludge for the mm -hmm. Right, right, which is half of, yes, that was, that was part of the deal. And it was yeah. $27 flat. Right. So it went up to 52 from 21 to 22 and then the proposal to go to 200 so um, what we were hoping for was if we can get away from that um, uh, three, uh, three point uh, three percent cents on on a gallon, um, and try to get it down to more to uh, two cents on half the volume. Um, I just, I mean, I've, I've said this before publicly. I'll say it again. The landfill is the Achilles' heel of Nottaway County. We are. Uh, we're, we're financially in all of our other areas, and there I've said this before, there are 95 counties in Virginia, 85 wish they were us. We're that well off financially, except for the landfill. Um, so anything that is an increase, and we're all facing the same thing. We're all going to face gas increases um, uh, along, you know, along with everybody else. Everybody knows what's happening internationally across the nation. We're going to absorb, we're going to have those hits this year. We're going to have those hits in the next year. So anything you can do to help us, but we would like to make that as a as a if you will an opening salvo of we'll take your sludge for free if you could do something for us in like that two cents a gallon half volume. Um, and I would like to lock it down. I think you know, Philip and I, I think we're all in agreement. We'd like to lock it down with a piece of paper, not just a. We had a meeting and we talked about it. We really want to get down to something a little bit more formal. So that when Phillips retiring and I'm retiring, you know, people still know what the deal was. Yes, be happy to take any questions, and see uh, see if Lynn or Katie have anything that they want to add. So if we were to, and not saying we're going to do this, but if we were to go to three cents, Philip, off my calculation, if we were to go to three cents, it would be five hundred three thousand dollars a year, and then half of that would be two fifty one. And then so that would be a hundred and ninety thousand dollar increase. That's if you went to the hundred percent three volume. I would be for, and this is just me. And again, this would all be in writing, so it's not handshake, but old boy deals. I personally don't want to see any extra revenue. I like to see more joint effort with the county, such as and this may raise some ears. A in the school property building. Um, I mean, we're taking on big hits over there when it comes to we're going to tear down the building and do this. I would like to be able to work mutually. I don't care about the money. But when we take the hit to have to go tear it down, we got to be able to fund it somehow. It'd probably be, uh, you, if you used a contractor, I was planning on tearing that one down. Correct. With Wallace and just let them stay over there. Um, if you could get a contractor, I think it'd be about $75,000. We'd tipping fee to get rid of that landfill. Um, I think there was some question about how much of that was vested on top of that. Yeah. And uh, so... Um, yeah, there's there's several things that are going on. I don't think we should. I don't think the county should try to cut our throats, and we should try to cut the county's throats. Right. Right. I think we should all work together, mm -hmm. but with an understanding that look, we're trying to make. I mean, we're on everybody else's tail about tearing buildings down, and okay. SB Cox is over and at. Um, Had they started? Mm -hmm. Had they really could? Yeah. Excellent. And dealt with that uh, just in case you didn't know the collapsed portion of the building there. In the back, yeah, they like started doing a bunch of preliminary stuff house. this week. And the fire department had to go out there and had a big water leak and everything, so they did get a permit to tear down the building. Okay. I, I had a question for you guys. So you said you're proposing your sludge rates to go up, and you already looked at that would be an increase for us. Mm -hmm. I think we're their only sludge customer. Based on our sludge yeah. volume, we based use on, okay. based on the sludge volume at the, the new rate. rate. Proposal, so you're looking at about a fifty thousand dollar increase. To about seventy thousand, 
That's the offer is you know we we weigh that off as you all can <coughs> push that uh, lead change down and have vodka. What is the town payment averaging annually now for sludge? Our bill we just got a fifty ton bill a few days ago that I that I did a fifty two dollars so twenty five hundred bucks so that's sitting in there. It's about fifty tons a month with the last bill. <coughs> Proposed increase was going to represent about a fifty thousand a year increase mm -hmm. over what you're currently paying. Yes, yes. And that's in the water and sewer one then. Correct. If I can just add something to that, and those are accurate information, I don't dispute it. But looking at the market price, okay, of what other landfills take for sludge, mm -hmm. Amelia, because we don't carry a lot of trucks, it's impractical for us to try to take trash. Right? It's just for seventy five thousand dollars, we can't mm -hmm. privatize the collection. Trash on sludge, um, waste management in Amelia agreed to take it for $56 a ton. And how much is it here? It's 52 now, but the proposal <coughs> would go to 200 But the few loads that we have, there's probably three or four loads a week, we probably get the tonnage and the size of a truck. Um, okay. We could probably get those to Amelia and back um, at 56, 56 a ton. Okay. So I don't think the if we were to take it to the county at 200, yes, that number of fifty thousand dollar increase. Um, but if it went to 200, honestly, I'd probably start carrying it to Amelia. Uh, county crew already carries it to Amelia. So I should be able to do this in my head. But Jennifer, do you know what y'all are paying annually for the sludge right now? I can find out real quick. We're going to go to the panel. I'm just trying to see. We would have got those last four bills or whatever. Or you guys have them. Well, you what was the yes, 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 do you have that in a separate line in the budget? I've got the budget right here. Is that a separate uh, yeah, yeah, expenditure line? I don't know if I have the current, but. <coughs> we can tell you what the budget is bigger. The budget is not incorporating our increase, right? It is not. It would, it, uh, I think we just based it on what our previous year's usage was, so it may even be low, as a matter of fact. It may still be based on the $27. Eric, you're talking about the, the demolition of the school building. Lots happened in the last couple of years around here, but <laughs> if I remember correctly, there were conversations between the board and town council. And they were gonna, we were gonna waive the waive tipping, the tipping fees, fees. And that was taking the brick, like all those things. Correct. So and that's been agreed upon. I don't know if that. I, I think the the agreement was that we that the county will consider. I don't yeah, think the school board consider. could commit you guys. So they hadn't yeah. been. I don't think committed, but no. yes, we had asked them to. Yeah. Well, I, just, I just don't want it to be perceived that Correct. No, no, absolutely no. isn't the no. And I can tell you, I've been the one completely against Philip going over there, tearing it down now because of the cost of it. Even if all that was free, it's just, I mean, it's not cheap. <laughs> uh, we have in our current budget, and I think it's probably built on $27 a ton because we didn't, we just looked at what we spent last year, $12,000. That's all we have budgeted. That's, That's how budget many year to date. Yeah. I couldn't email you all the year to date, but yeah. that doesn't include rubbish like when we tear down the house or anything. No, that's just for that's the wastewater disposal. Okay, good, good, good. Perfect. Thank you. So going from twelve, and then add the fifty to that, correct? Mm -hmm. No, because I think the twelve is too low. Because we budgeted on the previous year's uh, usage, the previous, and I they raised it in. September 2021 to $52, so we're probably going to be looking at a more twenty-ish thousand dollars. Yeah. Usage. But you're saying you wouldn't, we wouldn't have to increase the budget because you, you could take it to a million. I would take it to a million. Right. If it went to 200, I would just say yeah, for three loads a week. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you do have to in that. In all fairness, we do have to calculate Gas. our time. And all that too. I mean, we can't just say, "Oh, we're going to be saving." But I don't think it's 150 bucks an hour. Correct. Or Agreed. A, a ton. And truck probably. It's a single axle job, so we probably carry 12 tons, 15 tons, maybe. About eight or nine on that. Nine. Right. I don't know if you're going to solve it tonight. Um, if you want to choose it, next time we do a finance committee meeting, I'm not proposing to do anything until such time as the budget comes up. Anyway. Nothing. I don't think would take effect until so I would propose taking effect until the first of July. With what Mr. Costin is saying, and this may be wrong, if we did two cent at half, it would come to one hundred fifty-two thousand a year. Am I? It would. 
It would be a yeah. hundred fifty-two thousand six hundred eighty dollars. It'd be more than double it. Yeah. yeah. Is there a story behind the half or? Yeah. Is there a story behind call it one cent? Man, I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather <laughs> it just be one cent and bill for the whole. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> Eric, what did you just calculate? The two cents for half volume would come to what? One hundred fifty-two thousand six hundred eighty dollars. Which would be like a ninety-one thousand dollar increase. One cent for all, which is what we've been able to. For the same. Yeah. Yeah, which would be the same, yeah, because that's at the half rate for two cents. So that's an increase of ninety-one thousand four hundred twenty-eight dollars over current. Plus our raising off the sludge. Correct. I just, and I agree with Jake. The fact, all this half stuff, forget all that. <laughs> I don't like it. it. It's too much calculating. It's not difficult, but it just. It's another step in the process. It's a cloud of smoke to the outsider that has to try to decipher it. Um, but we're still charging just half volume for sludge for the island. Just half the rate. Half the rate currently. Half the current rate with full volume. Yes. Okay. That's my understanding. You're doing 52 yes. mm -hmm. right now, right? And then for full for a moment, yes. Full volume. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. I would personally, I would like to see some commitment though to the aging of the school building. To be honest, though. And I don't know how much that's going to be. I will tell you, I hate to see bricks going to landfill. Just an inert material. Jacob Walker has proposed that it be a hundred dollars a load. I think I even asked you guys, would you pay that? And separate the bricks and the masonry. Shoot, basically just crushes them up and yeah. makes a crushing on each other. That's probably cheaper and better not to stick in the landfill. To tell you the truth, uh, maybe there would be some <coughs> care we could come to you or something. But Jason has agreed in his materials recycling to break them out. I don't think it makes good cover. Well, it does. It does I've, already, I've talked to Gary about this because we're looking at pulling down the Coley House mm -hmm. and salvaging the bricks and the masonry there for Rosedale. Yeah. It, it would be. Which we're big, burning that this weekend, correct? Uh, that's supposed to be yeah. you know, exercised out this weekend and burn out what you can. Yeah. With protecting the transformers. Correct. What building is that? The Coley House. The one between the old Near church the old that we used to be at and the church firm or the church services. Well, you're left until the fire department burns up there. They're over three. Yeah. It's our fire department. Really? Huh? It's our fire department. First one in 11 years. Really? Yeah. They, they've already burnt the barn for us that was next door to it. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to retain. Well, that's cool. No, they to retain the house for some training, which they're going to do this weekend. The house that we proposed to them, the fire department was pretty dilapidated. So it's basically with still a yeah. sale of drawings and right? uh, fire. This one you can yeah. almost go and live in currently, I believe. Yeah. They want training for the structure safety to win. It's, it's, it's got a lot of mold and mildew. But I think Jennifer had something yeah. she'd like to add to her question. I just had a question about so you guys don't want to do the cut in half, no. right? So you want to do the full amount at one cent possibly. Well, yeah. My question is, have we ever looked at how much it costs to for us to treat it? Well, I will be honest like, have you with you. We're the charging them the in-town like rate. Right. Now this does have a little bit more yeah. intense everybody's time than, involved than regular in domestic it. stepage. It has potential for more things to be in there. But we're charging them at the same rate as we charge my mother-in-law or Lynn. Six point oh oh eight. But it's just we bill you on a thousand-gallon schedule. Leachate is typically because it's billed to us, or uh, Edmund calculates it on a per gallon. So I think what Jennifer's asking: Does it take more to treat? What I think they it does. And, and I think Matt Bogg has given us our per gallon treated cost. You know, and that's kind of just what I wanted to look at, just to make We've sure. We've declared to the citizens. Yeah. We've told the citizens in town mm -hmm. that takes eight dollars and forty-seven cents to treat the waste and do that. That's what we charge you and my mother-in-law and you at home and Jake. He paid that, so that's the in-town rate. Okay, um, but I do think it's, it 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 presents some more noxious contaminants. Well, Ed says that night that it's a little bit more difficult. The leachate mm -hmm. is. I can tell you, Ed uh, failed some ammonia tests when we were taking the pool down. Who would have thought? But I think the chemicals that are in those pool down and the uh, cleansers and all that, mm -hmm. it really 
put the ammonia uh, and it, it does the concentrate. Uh, so you Jennifer, when you <coughs> looked at the, if you looked at the treated charge that you just talked about for our stuff, you sort of factor in if we take off those charge for the right. slug. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's what I would do. Do you want me to kind of look at it like we did ticket? You know, when I worked with Michael, just kind of looking at the collateral to make sure we don't lose out and you guys don't lose out and just kind of come up with a... If you did a penny at full of volume, I guess it has the same effect as mm -hmm. pennies at half volume. Right. Yeah, it should be taken out of an equation. It should it just do the equation differently, but it'll still produce, I assume, the same that effect. It'll be the same amount. But my question, too, is just like, so if you based it on the, the sewer rates, so does that go up every time our sewer rate for the general I think logically it, it should. If we've got to go up 3% to build more sewer line, or a good example, in 2013, we replaced about a third of the sewer on the south end of town. It was a huge project with consent order and all that. And we raised our rate 26% or 24% mm -hmm. with the earmark we fixed side of the month. But we also build ticket. And they didn't have anything to do with it, you know, 1897. The same boat fare, though, with that, because yeah. we have the same but what we do, keep expenses. We just consider it all one set. Yeah. So so I just wanted to get it right moving forward, to get it right for, for future utility clerks or if someone else inherits it. You know, we just want to have it structured, you know, because I know with Ticket, at one point, I don't know if they raised it, you know, in town too. But I know you and I decided for the past that, eleven years we you know, have they raised might it. Have started out three everybody. dollars a gallon, but then once if we raised it, it went up the same percentage. But that's just I wanted to get that kind of futuristic item cleared up. Okay, so um, as part of the agreement that we're going to set in paper, can we put a time frame on it? That this is this is a lot for three years, four years, five years, something that that's a lot. So. That could be factored into everybody's budget, and then if we had to do an increase for some kind of improvement, then we we pick that up on the next version of the agreement. Right. If you keep it like a relatively short period, as long as it's not ten years or something. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I like I like to have it on paper, but at the same time, I don't want to put an agreement where somebody's hanging on it sixty years later right, without a right, time frame right, right. on it. So mm -hmm. three to all, five. It's all about there. coming up together with a time frame where we can. Oh, hopefully we'll just pass it over for another five or three or whatever. Right to the three years. Okay, I understand. Well, does your does your CIP go out six? What? Your CIP does it go out six years? Five years. Five year. Yeah, that would line up nicely with your CIP if it's a five year. Yeah. Well, that's the sixty look point. I and I'm just one voice. I agree with the the cooperative aspect. It is kind of hard to commit to anything without having putting dollars to it. Absolutely. You know? Oh, yeah. In the town, <coughs> we obviously have a lot of investment in that area with the pleasure from the county and the school board because we're able to use the facility. Yeah. Um, and so we're willing to put forth money to help tear down buildings that the roofs are collapsing. But yeah. ultimately, they're not our buildings. Yeah, <laughs> so right. we could step back and say, whose baby is it? And But we don't want that because... Right. It, it may not get done today. more stagnation. It just yeah. nothing gets done. So I just want a cooperative effort. I mean, right. it, it's not openly our building. Yes, we use the property. I, no, I agree. And it's not in the lease agreement no, saying that that's our responsibility. That's us taking on extra responsibility. Yeah. So that's all I ask for is that, you know, if we're willing to work, y'all are willing to work, I feel like we can make a better county, first of all. I, I agree completely. I'm in the same boat. I'd like to view if this deal is made that it's kind of opening the door to, to future projects and communication and whether it's us coming to you or you coming to us, you know, having talks about what we can do to make, make the county better, whether it's in Blackstone or, or in the rest of the county. Yeah, if I could add, I'm going to let y'all know, we've had some conversation with the school board and uh, facilities have come up, obviously, for budget purposes. They have retained a consultant who I understand is at some point in the process, I think closer to the end than, than the beginning, on looking at all of their facilities. Uh, that includes the two buildings over in Crew by the baseball park. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've looked at everything. Mm -hmm. um, and they're waiting for that to kind of get a feel for what they can 
get rid of, what they could reuse, how they could reuse it, so on and so forth. I'll see where we are on that. I will tell you, we just emailed today. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do you remember the school board actually adopted a resolution mm -hmm. and it had several things, including that we would build a community center on the property? So that predates that referendum. And it had certain caveats in there that we could tear down the one story building. And they wanted the two story building that we were currently to tear down. They wanted that one down as well. But I think the council came back and said, we'll revisit that in, in a few years and try to figure that one out. That one's not collapsing. The one story building has collapsed. I mean, it's gone. Um, and the walls are to the point you can't walk in and out anymore. And the roof has been leaking so long it actually has eaten the floor mm -hmm. and the joints, not just the. the the wood floors, but the actual joints have gone across is missing. So it needs to come down. So the, our agreement that we sent to Dr. Grimes took out the community center portion because I think the armory was the winner, in fact. And um, um, it did include the county working with us and then supporting the county in our request to take the road. In fact. Um, I think that was the biggest change that we had in there that we took out the two story building uh, because we just didn't want to hang with that at this very time and we took out the community center part. We even have agreed to put in the water and sewer taps, not yours, the school yeah. board's water and sewer taps in case of needing trailers in the future on those kind of locations. That was kind of Sherman's thing that, oh, what do we do in the event we have a tornado? Well, I can tell you what you're not gonna do. You ain't gonna put them in the building. No. It's gonna be portable and so the town- And we, 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 we will continue to, we will stand by that. I'm sure we would have Andre and everybody out there working their tails off oh, if absolutely. we needed to. And electric, I mean, we would have an electric connection. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, those buildings are smoke, man. It's just not happening. You spend so much money trying to put a kit in that thing that it's portable. So those are the two revisions from the original agreement. If you'd like me to send you a copy of what we sent Dr. Grimes, I'll forward it to you. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, we've spent, and Eric will confirm, probably more money than we expected on our recent improvements at the ball field. And the for the, that we got for the Gators right field. Smoked it. And we're done with the, the sidewalk and the curb and gutter. Sam's going to work on antique lighting and then putting the stadium lights back up. And we have built a football stadium, a football field, if you notice, it's nice and level now. And uh, uh, drains is working at big rain we had the other night. I haven't seen any really egregious washouts. And uh, Thursday, we're opening bids on a concession stand. Okay. I think we're going to get close to our budget, or the available funds, I should say. Okay. We had some money in the CD, and we, we did really well on that CD. And so we use that money to do the football field and hopefully the concession stand. Hopefully the concession stand. I think we're going to be closer than we were. It was 99800 last <laughs> time we only restricted the bid. So that area is really taking a look at us. And there was some GDI grant money that was in there. Um, turned down that building. Could be one of the next things, but I can tell you I might as well jump into it immediately anyhow. Even if the school say we agree with 100%, I got to put some money aside so we can do a desk abatement and go out there now. So is the best thing, obviously we've talked and it sounds like we have somewhat of an agreement, but for them to go back to their board and ask. And we'll come to the council, a penny a gallon for 100%. And reach out, I would like <coughs> to get a commitment of that, the ball field area along with it. Okay. A general con agree gentleman's agreement as to, you know, let's work together to do something. A little open ended. Oh, I know. Should that be looked at when we look at the three years? Like, where if we had a rate increase, could we also provide if we spent money to date in that aspect of it? Like, if we need to look at it then, or is that bring in some more factors? What did you just say? Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I think, uh, you know, I, that's why the, the age of the school building was mentioned. I leaned over to Katie. I said, we Kind of complicating the deal mm -hmm. a little too much. Yeah. I, I hate to talk silos, but okay, let's talk reach eight landfill, let's take talk school board issues. Correct. You know, that's just how I just it's separate because they all kind of touch on different parts of the budget. Mm -hmm. you know. But at some point, I mean I don't wanna muddy it, but when you muddy it, I'm all I'm all using it. At, at this point though <laughs> we've got a bird in the hand. And so while the getting is there. I, I mean, I'm looking out for the citizens of Blackstone, ultimately. Right, I understand. And so that's why I bring forth the option of, look, we need to be able to work together to not only accomplish just the water, 
or the, the so septic. That's one thing we want to know before we go back to the board, so mm -hmm. all of this is off the table if we don't commit no, to something. No, I wouldn't say, it, but I would like to see some kind of, of, of yeah, joint yes. effort to do it instead of, all right, if we've got our rates done, man, we, we don't have to worry about that right now. It's just. We don't want it to be forgotten. Yeah. yeah. yeah I understand that. But because we've fallen on deaf ears. I mean, technically, separate issues. if mm -hmm. the building inspector would go over there and look, now I know he's a county employee, but the building is condemnable. I mean, it's, we could do our nuisance ordinance like we've enforced on several other homes in Blackstone and this take it. belongs to the school board, am I correct? Yeah. yeah. We don't want to do that. No, we, we don't. Do we absolutely don't. We want to build relationships. We don't want to trust them. But the school board when they release property, it goes to the county. Yeah, then it goes to the county. Correct. I believe is what. Okay. If they dispose of the property, not the buildings, not the yes. other stuff, but if they sell the property, it's got to go back to you guys and release that. And that was the difference. If you remember 12 years ago, there were two other buildings on that property, and they were horrible. There was an old music building there. Yes. Beer bottles and liquor bottles and that thing, and then the old ag shop. Man, that thing was full of old bleachers and barrels and who knows what. And stuff. And the county guys, we tore all that stuff down. But that was only after a 3 2 vote, if you remember. And it was pretty controversial. And uh, Sherman and, and Clarence really fought tearing those buildings down. But believe it or not, the other three board members voted to allow it to tear down. But subsequently, we finally convinced Lonnie, and I think he researched it, that tearing the buildings down. Selling the property requires the order. Yeah. It brings us back to the facilities plan that they're doing. Yeah. You know, I don't know what I think they're thinking is to have some objective documentation mm -hmm. to make decisions about buildings. That's Do you it. know when that'll be done? I, I it's don't. not far out from yeah. being finished. Like I, no, said, I don't know about, it, it, I don't know about it, presentation, but right. it's not far out from being finished. out yet. It, like they're in the process. Yes. Yes. Like I said, it's closer to the end than it is yeah. to the beginning. They've never given us a date to say, oh, we'll have something by April, May, June. Would you guys be willing to go back to the full board and and and, and parrot Eric's point, but as far as a formal agreement, is the one percent on a hundred percent flow acceptable to you guys? And basically what y'all propose is the with uh, the with the reduction of the the sludge. The sludge. Yeah. With the sludge reduction in well, everything was sounding good until we start trying to tie in they just wanting us to make commitments about something that um, is kind of free. Maybe, but we don't have dollar amounts. I mean, obviously, I think we agree to a cooperative or relationship, but I'm not sure where we're going with this, and if that's tied into this, we may need to fall back and reconsider the proposal. I mean, I don't know what the approach is other than pass things along to the taxpayers. I'll leave that uh, for Eric to, do you guys want to make a recognition to council? Right. Right. Are we premature? This is where I think we are. I think where we are is um, a penny, full volume. We're waiving off sludge uh, fees to get that lower rate. Keep it, keep it as low as we can get it. Um, five years, <coughs> a written document, and we will. I mean, that's, that's kind of where I see, that's that package regarding the <coughs> Chase landfill. But I can tell you, we've, we've um, Philip and I have already had discussions about the school board. We've, we've had discussions with the school board about buildings and, and whatnot. Um, the ball field's kind of a new item, but uh, Philip and I have talked about it. But um, I, I kind of like to, I almost see these as three categories, landfill, school board, and some kind of recreation program. I see them as three different categories. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a ball guy, so you know I get I get the ball field piece. Um, are, are you okay if we kind of really lock down on the landfill and then? He could have given us that option to do that yes. without tying the hands of without else. without. But I think that's just what a, we have to clarify. a gentleman's agreement that yes, these are two issues that we'll be working on with the school board in the county. Here's what's coming. Nothing bad. I didn't do anything wrong. But if you didn't know, there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure and ARPA money floating around these days. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I dare say you will see, it probably would take two years or two and a half years 
for a rate to be instituted for it? But we have, we applied for water money. Whether we get it, I don't know. We submitted to the health department on the EQ side. Um, there's a trunk line, so you know, that runs through behind the, the new Baptist church that you used to own and going down to the uh, Rocky Bump pump station. If you're familiar with it. Everybody on the fire train around back in there. We're having trouble with a new pump station because we get a lot of grit in it and the line is in bad condition. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's a priority, immediate priority, but it is tearing up a pump station because the grit, the grit in it is probably a problem with the, the, the impellers and the volumes and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's a second part. We do have a pretty serious problem with the force main that runs out of force drive pump station. And we've had two blowouts in that line over the past nine months. And we didn't have private contractors come in. Um, that's not necessarily old of a line. Uh, it is paid off, um, but that line is a duffel iron line. And because of the grit and solids that pass through it, through the pump station and going to that line, it's actually reduced the thickness of the wall by probably two thirds. Okay, I can't say it's brittle, but it's very thin. Uh, and we know that where we had to dig it out and cut it out. Um, so they're probably going to be a application at a minimum for the force drive force main because that's the one we're most serious about um, and I'd say the construction would be within the next two years and then rates would be considered there so would it be agreeable to instead of five years do three years because I do know we're going to have a rate issue I'm telling you up front it may be two percent <coughs> it may be a percent and a half it may be something nominal but I do think there's going to be a rate increase within the next three years at a minimum to pay that force drive well, I had suggested five because it was tied to your CIP. Um, I, I get it. I get it. I understand. Three. I think three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With three years. Okay. Yeah. We can do three. And that's being up front. It may be more. It may be, but I don't think we're going to do less than that force main, that force drive. Which runs parallel to West Entrance Road, gets the paved property, <laughs> and goes over to about where John Hill's office is. And, and you are still talking July one, right? I would propose July one for the rate increase, so you can factor in that. That would be that would be helpful. That would be you cool that? Our rates are still higher on sludge currently, though, right? Well, would you would you eliminate the charge for sludge before budget time? I have to go. We have to go with the public the public hearing and because it's a fee adjustment. You know, I'm just saying because it went up from what we had in our budget from twelve probably twenty now to twenty now that, that we did not budget for. We didn't budget for, but we. But in fairness to Logan, when I asked her, she said, well, we advertised this and this was done correctly. So I'm not saying Correct. it was done incorrectly yeah. or we didn't receive notification. I didn't look at the paper and just check it out. Didn't know. Hmm. Three years, 10 age, 100%. 10 years. Pardon? In waste sludge. Are you three years, years? 10 I didn't years. hear that part from you. Yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that's the first thing they said. July 1. <laughs> July 1, wait for it. Yeah, yeah, July 1. Right. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Well, that helps us. Thank we'll you. Bring it forward to council. Because your sludge rate stops going up to 200. You added that to July 1. That was part of that. Correct. That was part of that proposal. Right. It's just at that. It's pretty much off the board now because of other things. Okay. okay. All right. Is that a recommendation from the committee? I think I'd rather take it to the whole just council before. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But just uh, again, I mean, we've been I've been on this Thank council twelve years, and nothing's done been done with those bills over there. So there's no change on it. Maybe we can. Um, we'll Who's this? I think Jennifer's going to run from here. Do I have anything else? Oh. Capital improvement plan. Okay. You want to mention it real quick. You want to do that one? Capital improvement plan. Please look. These are as proposed or as submitted by the department heads. I haven't modified them. I haven't changed them. Uh, there may be some other things uh, that I don't have in this year's planning. Any new street projects? Okay. And VDOT, we'll look at the minutes. VDOT does require your capital improvement plan to reflect street projects. I do not have that in here because I don't propose to do it this year. Other than Sending the curb and gutter down um, South Main Street, but I don't think that certainly would be done this year. And two, I don't even know if we can apply this year because it's on a cycle 
a multi-year cycle. So take a look at it. We've got some additions, subtractions, but it isn't exactly as it's supposed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so the health insurance, I did take this to the insurance committee. They've already lobbied for me there. Okay, and so um, they wanted to bring it to you guys before it goes in front of council to see if we have the money to do it. The problem is, is TLC, when they sent us our new rate, they also changed our renewal date. Normally, I'm given April 1st through the 15th to get in our tiers and our contributions and our renewal numbers. Mandatory, they said, no extensions. I have to have that turned in by March 25th. But we're also facing an increase. I don't know if you remember, but last year, the insurance committee really wanted me to look into how much it would cost the town to pay more towards employees out-of-pocket health insurance. But at the time, we renewed, and Eric and the insurance, account finance and insurance both agreed it was too close to budget. We couldn't make it work. So we had to renew as is. So <clears throat> unfortunately, they weren't able to really contribute any more into it. But what insurance would like you guys to consider is to just pay the increase that the employee was facing. So overall, we were already facing an increase. Um, this year. It was roughly an 8.9% cost increase across the board for our premium. Um, but that was going to change the employees, especially the family plans and the ones that add um, their spouses. So that was going to make their bill go up. So insurance wanted to know, could you guys absorb the employees increase to try to keep the employees out of pocket the same? So you have our current rates right here in front of you. If you go to this second blue page, it kind of separates insurance from that first section. And yeah, yep, this should be that. One, two, three. Which yep. one? It looks like this. Oh, yeah. The first. Mm -hmm. So that's the summary. So our premium total we're currently paying is roughly $782,000. This is based on enrollment figures. Um, with their new cost, um, total premium $851,964. And we have it broken up. And if you go to the next page, you can see my current rates and the number of employees enrolled for each tier and how current percentage paid by the town for each plan but so you're asking the town or they're asking the committee the town to absorb a $12,000 increase is that what I'm seeing so you're already facing a $58,000 increase for health insurance Correct. as it stands today like if we were to renew it with the tiers that exist but what insurance is asking you to is absorb is the $69,000 increase, which is above the, the roughly the twelve thousand right. difference from what you would. You said if when you say insurance, insurance, you're talking about the committee, not our insurance provider. Correct, the okay. committee. I've taken this to the committee, and they're they wanted me to check with you guys. We we were already going to see the fifty-eight thousand dollar increase. I don't think there was any way around that one unless you guys tiered it down where the town paid less, um, but. They're asking you to to eat the employees increase, and then that would be roughly a sixty nine thousand dollar increase. Of course, I did break it down because I'm all about your funds mm. <laughs> because we have our. <laughs> mm. um, so let's see, I got electric, water, sewer. So roughly thirteen thousand of that sixty nine is in water and sewer, and seventy two hundred is in electric. So the remaining is in the general fund. Um, you know, it's budget. I don't, I don't think it at this point. It really matters about our increase to what our insurance premium would be anyway. I think we just need to discuss the, the employee portion of it. The employee Correct. plus family. Correct. Increase. Yes. We're going to have to pay that increase. There's no way around it. Correct. Um, so so how it's div divvied up amongst uh, different systems or different departments. That's, I mean, that's up to you guys. That 